hello to all of you readers out there in YouTube world. I am back with another few chapters in Navigating Early by Claire Vanderpool. Today I will be reading chapter 17. Let's go. Dark Secrets and Accidental Treasures. The words drifted their way into my drowsy head. The heat from the hearth had warmed me through, and with a couple of corned beef sandwiches in my stomach, my eyelids drooped and I shifted in my seat, trying to stay awake. McScott's men were full of ale and heavy with sleep, but McScott's eye remained open, glowering, as Early continued his story. McScott traced his finger over the wooden grain of the gunstock, almost in a caress. Early had captured the pirate's attention in a way that was both admirable and frightening. I heard Early in a distant, far-off way. It was as if I were on a boat floating in the middle of a lazy stream with wakefulness on one bank and sleep on the other. Dream took over and I felt myself floating in the world of Pi, translucent among the lost souls. I saw the faces of the men and women going about their chores, but I realized that the things they were doing didn't lead to anything, didn't accomplish any task. A young man in overalls placed king kindling in a campfire but cooked no food. A bearded man cut down a tree but left it where it fell. A woman wearing an apron hung little boy denims on a line to dry, but there was no little boy to wear them. I wanted to move on, to row away from this place, but I had no oars. I clutched the side of the boat. My hands were light and sheer, translucent. I am one of them, I said, rousing from my dream. My heart was pounding. McScott's chin rested on his chest, his rifle cradled in his arms. He and his men slept soundly, but I couldn't hear early. He was sitting at the hearth. I clutched the arms of the easy chair, glancing at my hands to make sure they were solid, but still my heart pounded. I was one of them. I was lost. I'd felt this way before, at the regatta. I had been trying to row my boat back to the dock in a sink. I had been trying to row my way back to the dock in a sinking boat. Early had called out his commands that guided me back. Where was Early now? I recalled Early's telling of Pi being hauled aboard the pirate ship. And yes, Pi's nighttime storytelling on the ship kept him alive, but still he was thrown into the brig every morning. I didn't know if there was a brig at the Bare Knuckle Inn, but I didn't want to wait to find out. Then I saw him. Early stood at the counter as the young barmaid cleaned mugs and whiskey glasses. She kept her head lowered, her eyes on the hot, sudsy water as she washed one glass after another. I moved to the bar. Come on, Early, we need to get out of here before everybody wakes up. But Early paid me no mind. He just looked at the girl as if he knew her from somewhere. Is your name Pauline? Pauline. I recognized the name. She was the haggard and homely wench from the pirate vessel. The girl shook her head, a limp strand of hair hanging in her face. Are you sure? Maybe it was and you don't remember. I think I know my own name, she mumbled. Come on, Early, let's go. Then Early did something I'll never forget. He reached across the bar and gently took that strand of stringy hair and tucked it behind the girl's ear. She looked up, startled. You have a very pretty smile. What? You have a very pretty smile, you just don't remember. She touched a soapy hand to her face. She still wasn't smiling, not with her mouth anyway, but something had changed in her green eyes. The dullness was gone, and something light and alive had taken its place. With that, and the bubbles of soap clinging to her hair, there was something, well, pretty about her. 
But before she could say anything else, there was a terrible explosion outside that shook the whole place, rattled the windows, and nearly made the bear's head come off the wall. It was enough to wake everyone in the bare knuckle in, and we all streamed out to see what had happened. McScott, his men, Early and I, we all looked to the top of the mountain that Olson had driven up earlier. The explosion had shot a great blaze of fire into the air, and creeping down the mountain was a trail of fire shooting its way left, then right, in a winding blaze of yellow and orange and heat. Get up there and put out that fire before it hits trees, yelled McScott. Bring a truck round and we'll go up the back side. Men were scurrying every which way, and I couldn't take my eyes off the blazing spectacle. Early, I said. Yeah, Jackie. What was in those barrels? Those barrels that were right side up and upside down on the rickety truck with gaps in the bed. Nothing but dried up rum. It was all turned to black powder, black powder, explosive powder. It must have been pouring out of the kegs all the winding way up the mountain. I didn't know if it was the gas lantern or maybe a stray cigarette that had set off the explosion, but it didn't matter. Early needed no explanation as he looked up the mountain in awe. I've never seen a volcano before. So that ends chapter 17, and I'll be back in a few with chapter 18 for you.